In Hypixel Skyblock, the accessory bag is extremely useful. Whether you want to do some sort of combat or even farm, the amount of magical power and accessories that you have really do impact your ease of gameplay. Today we're going to show you the best way to tackle your accessory bag and how you should be trying to gradually upgrade it over time without completely wasting all your coins in the wrong place. Before going into this video, I do quickly want to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel. We are coming up on 5,000 subscribers and with the YouTuber rank in mind, this milestone is huge for us. Without wasting any more of your time, let's move into the guide. Now let's first talk about the bag itself and how you can upgrade it. The accessory bag is pretty much given to you at the start of your profile, being unlocked at Redstone Collection Level 2. And that'll start you off with 3 accessory bag slots, which can slowly be upgraded over time, until Redstone Collection 16, which will leave you with 57 accessory bag slots. It sounds like a lot, but trust me, that's not even close to having a full bag. Assuming you are pretty new to the game, your main goal should be to get down Redstone Minions ASAP, as the 1.4 million Redstone required isn't really manually grindable yet, and the extra bag space is a massive help. Speaking of Redstone, you should also talk to the Redstone Miner who's located in the Pigman's Den. This NPC is going to offer you 4 accessory bag spaces just for simply giving him a little bit of redstone. The accessory bag can further be upgraded in the community shop at Elizabeth. It's a free upgrade that takes 2 IRL months to max out if you aren't using any gems, so it's best you stay on top of all of these upgrades. The final way to max out your accessory bag slots is through Jacobus. This NPC can offer up just under 200 accessory bag slots, but at the great cost of 1.7 billion coins. Assuming you've done every single one of these upgrades, you should have 6 full pages of accessory slots plus an extra slot over on page 7. With storage out of the way, we should now figure out the optimal power stones to use. As of recording, there are 31 power stones in the game. Now if we went over all of these, the video would be 6 hours long, so we're just going to quickly highlight the main ones that you're actually going to want to use. First, I guess we should mention the no power option. I don't know why anyone would use this or ever need it, but there you go. From the starter power category, we would recommend pretty for any intelligence based tasks like maging, or warrior for any sort of melee damage tasks. Moving to intermediate, we recommend you stick to commando for any melee and then inspired for any mage gameplay. Keep in mind that these are easily beaten out by cheap power stones, but for people that play Iron Man for example, these are good choices as some power stones might be cheap but hard to actually obtain. For tankiness, we're going to recommend pleasant, which comes from the precious pearl. This out of any other defense power stone is the most effective EHP wise. If something like crumbly from the fangtastic chocolate chip isn't horrible, and you realize the vitality and mending it gives off. So moving on to the mage reforges, there's two options and it's completely dependent on your budget. So if you're so if you're just starting out and even into like the late game, you're going to want to use the sighted reforge. Using sighted only costs about 100,000 coins and provides the second best mage benefits in the game. The other option is the bizarre reforge as it does give off the most intelligence and ability damage for any reforge. That is from eccentric paintings. There's something like sighted isn't horrible as not only are the ender monocles dirt cheap compared to the eccentric paintings used for bizarre, but it also has its other benefits, such as not reducing your combat stats. Before going into Combat Reforge, I will quickly mention some honorable mentions. Forceful is one of them, as it's never really useful for combat, but whenever you go to farm in the garden, it is actually the best fortune that you can get from the Mushroom Cow. But this isn't a garden guide, so we'll move on from that. Another mention is Bubba. This, this Power Stone is actually horrible for its stats, but the unique Power Stone ability is what makes it really useful. The extra 2 constant combat wisdom can be useful for situations where you might not need the extra damage, but you can use some extra combat wisdom. Personally, I use this for things like ghosts, but it's definitely damage dependent, so make sure to use your own judgement. Finally, let's talk about the combat reforges. It is pretty hard to fully recommend one, as everyone's stats are different, and when you take armor and pets into consideration, you can't really give one precise reforge. But here's the basic recommendations. Silky and Hurtful are great for if you're missing a ton of either strength or crit damage. It's always recommended to keep your strength and crit damage similar in these variant, and these reforge stones are amazing for that. Finally, we have Strong and Bloody. Bloody being the worst variant, but it is also cheaper and gives some intelligence while Strong solely focuses on giving the most evened out combat stats. Now one other reforge that I should mention is the Fortuitous Power Stone. Um, this is a default power stone that you unlock at the very beginning of the game and it will actually give you the most crit chance in the game out of any reforge stone. So if you are using a Terminator, you're going to want to use Fortuitous. Because the Terminator divides your crit chance by 4, you need as much crit chance as you can possibly get, so make sure you're using Fortuitous and nothing else if you're ever using a Terminator. Finally, before getting into the main accessories, let's quickly go over their upgrades. You can upgrade accessories in two different ways. First and most simply, Recoms. Recombobulators are used to upgrade the rarity of most accessories by one tier and make up most of your magical power. We also have Enrichments. Enrichments can be applied to any accessories legendary or higher, including those that are recom from Epic, and it gives a small stat increase like Magic Finder Strength. These can also be a change once applied to any stat with an enrichment swapper. And finally, the most important part, the accessories themselves. As of recording this video, the highest magical power you can achieve is 1589. If you're watching this video far in the future, the number is constantly updated on the Hypixel wiki. On top of that, there are 116 unique accessories currently in the game, using up just around 2.5 accessory bag pages. The Hypixel wiki categorizes these into 9 categories, being collections, NPCs, events, mob drops, slayers, quests, dungeons, rift, and miscellaneous. 
But sadly, because we don't want to give you some boring two hour long podcast session going over each accessory and its ability, we're going to slightly dumb this down. Firstly, let's talk about the value of each accessory. Both common and special talismans are going to give you only three magical power. Any special accessory that's recombobulated will turn into a very special accessory and give you five magical power. An uncommon accessory will give you five magical power, rare will give you eight, epic will give you 12, and legendary will give you 16 magical power. And finally, the mythic accessories will give you 22 magic power. This isn't the only way to get magical power though. Firstly, every type of abbey case has an extra ability to give you an extra magical power per abbey phone contact. As of recording, this is capped at an extra 24 magical power. The rift prism is another talisman in which, though only rare giving 8 magical power in the accessory bag, when imbued, the accessory will reward you with 11. We also have the hegemony artifact, which doubles the amount of magical power the talisman gives. In other words, rather than 22 magical power normally given from a mythic talisman, it now gives 44. As we did mention, the type of videos where we would normally have to go over each individual accessory in which order to get it in is pretty out of date due to the magical power calculator. This is a feature found in the Skyhelper bot, a bot seen in nearly every Skyblock Discord, including ours which is included in the link in the description. Running the command slash accessories along with your IGN will show you everything that you need to know about your accessories. It'll show your magic power, your total accessories, how many are recombobulated, how many are enriched, what power you're on, it'll tell you everything you need to know. Now the reason we recommend using this bot to figure out what talismans you should get is because it has this feature here called slash missing, which you can also, instead of doing slash accessories, you can also just do slash missing like this. And whenever you run it, it'll show you which talismans to get in which order based on the coins. So as you can see here, the Shen's Regalia is going to cost me 439 million coins, and it's going to give me one magic power for every 27 million coins I spend. So if I were, for example, to use this on somebody, I'll use it on my alt account. So you can see what it looks like for someone who doesn't have most talismans. So if I use it on here, you'll see it's thinking. So it'll start out with the magnetic talisman, 8,000 coins for magic power. Then the jungle amulet, which is 300,000 coins for magic power. And then it, and then the list just keeps going on. Um, you can see if you can't get the, if you aren't able to access the talisman, it'll be crossed out. So since this account doesn't have the proper revenant level to use the devour ring, it's just crossed out and you can just skip over it to the next one. Same with the spider artifact and the red claw artifact. So um, you can join our discord. All you have to do is, so once you join, just come over to the hashtag gain access channel and react to this with a check mark like this, and you will gain access to the commands channel, which you can just come in here and you can type slash missing. And uh, you can see what talismans you're missing, which ones to get next for the cheapest price. To conclude the video, we're going to quickly do a damage test to demonstrate why magical power is as recommended as we make it. As Pat's going to demonstrate, he's going to do two different tests. One with and one without any magical power. The first one using no magical power, a set of crimson, basic molten equipment, and a dark claymore, he's doing only 860,000 damage. This might be a lot to some, but after a little bit of stat tuning and using his magical power, he's doing 2.4 million damage, nearly triple of what he did prior. Now this number could be an even larger gap if he did extreme tuning to get his stats even. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. If you're interested in seeing more of these guys, please let us know by subscribing. Support has been really amazing the past few weeks and we hope to keep this content schedule pretty consistent. But yeah, that's about it.